folks, and welcome to Passion Woodworking. Today we're going to work on uh, resurfacing your cast iron. Now, be it your cast iron on your jointer, your table saw, or any other tool that you have, power tool that has cast iron, um, if it gets some rust on it, you're going to want to resurface it properly. Now, if you have a new table saw, sometimes they have machining marks in the top of your uh, table saw. You're going to want to get rid of those with the maximum smooth surface. So today I'm going to go over on how to take care of that and the tools to use. Now for me, I'm going to remove these side tables or extension tables to the table saw. It's going to make it a lot easier when I start sanding the cast iron here uh, to make sure I don't remove any of the paint on these extension tables. Now I'm also going to be building on a later video an extension table and extension router table for the other side. So the first thing you want to do is find the nuts and bolts that hold on the extension tables. Now this is only a step that you're going to have to take if you choose to do so. You can leave the extension tables on and resurface your cast iron. pieces and not one lost. See that's why these little containers are great. Now the next step that you're going to do is uh, get your electric sander but before that I'm going to go over a tools list with you. Now the first tool you're going to need is an electric sander. You can use um, an orbital sander, um, a circular sander, or even a hand sander. Now the second tool you're going to need is steel wool. Steel wool is really great for buffing up uh, the steel, or the, excuse me, not the steel, the cast iron when you're done. We're going to be using this to buff it up into a nice shine. Now this is a tip that I use. I use an old school binder to store my sandpaper. I use a lot of scraps on the outside like this. Um, I never throw anything away. I used to watch a lot of a New Yankee workshop uh, when I was growing up. And that was one thing that normally said was don't throw anything away unless it's, I mean, it's ratty tatty, throw it away. But I use a um, magic marker to write on the outside of the paper what grit it is since some of these pieces don't show exactly what kind of grit. Now on the inside here I have my full sheets. Like I said, I don't throw anything away unless it's completely, completely used. Sometimes I have a habit of just um, taking one of these whole sheets and just sending down a piece of paper. But um, I have them in here from uh, high grit to low grit. Now I got my hand sandpaper right here and pre-cut for my electric sander. All right, with that, um, let's get to work. Now the last thing that you're going to want to do is make sure your blade is retracted all the way down into the table saw. When you're sanding you don't want to end up cutting your hand or hurting yourself or anything like that. And then we're going to take off the blade plate right here. All right, folks, before we get to work, I'm going to note some things. Now, there are going to be some areas that are going to have a little bit more rust than other areas. Now, those areas that you're going to, you're going to hit a little bit harder with the sander, don't be afraid to really go at it, but you don't want to take off too much. Um, around the miter slot areas, like right here and here, you don't want to get the sander in there and really start blasting away on that because that's going to mess with uh, your miter slot. It's going to make uh, your miter gauge start to rattle back and forth. 
Now these machinist marks right here from the, when they were milling the cast iron, now those are going to be able to uh, mostly be taken all the way out. You're going to want a very, very smooth surface by the time you're done. So that being said, let's start sanding. surface across the whole table. You don't want to hit one area a lot more than another area because you're going to create a divot. And you want it to um, maintain that nice flat surface while being really, really smooth at the end of this so your work just slides right across. Alright folks, I've finished up with the electric sanding. I've gone through uh, 100, 150, 220, and 320 grit. Now from here, I'm going to finish up with hand sanding. I just find that it makes a nice, uh, a better surface than an electric sander for the higher grits. I'm going to use 600 grits, and then I'm going to go to 800 grit. And uh, from there, I'm going to go to steel wool. So, and get to the hand sanding. So for the 600 grit, now I'm going to go ahead and finish up with the 8. Now this may be a little bit more than what's recommended or what you may want to do, but I like to overkill things. So here we go. Well folks, that's it for the 800 grit, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with the steel wool now, and I'll go over the process with that. Now you have your steel wool, what you're going to do is use it to buff out the surface. This is super fine steel wool. I believe it's, um, I got mine from Orchard Supply. It's super fine uh, quadruple zero. So this is really good stuff. It creates a really, really nice smooth finish. Now your wax that you're going to use, uh, you can use any kind of wax. Uh, uh, furniture wax. Um, they sell special uh, cast iron wax through uh, magazines like Rockler. Well, it's really, really expensive, so what I use is automotive wax. Now, it creates a surface that's waterproof. The water will bead right off of there, so if I do set uh, my beer down or a coffee cup and a little condensation gets on the surface, I can wipe it right off with a rag. Now, what you do is you take your wax and you put a little bit down, and I use the steel wool with the wax actually buff it in to the steel itself and it creates a really really good barrier. So I like to go and back the front motions just like this and uh, we'll get uh, the rest of the cast iron done here. Now 
one thing I didn't mention is if you left your table saw blade inside your saw, be really careful when you're buffing this stuff, doing all your sands. You don't cut yourself. Now my blade goes down there a good half inch to an inch. It keeps it out of the way for me. I got a 10 inch uh, 42 blade in there uh, right now. And it's far enough down that it's not going to catch my hand or anything like that. And I do stay conscious uh, that I don't hurt myself. But I will say, you know, some of those machine marks, I don't know if you guys can see them really well with the glare, but um, there is some machine marks left over. Now, that's nothing to be worried about. You get it as smooth as you want. Um, but you don't have to worry if there is some machine marks left over. Just as long as it buffs out real nice and uh, that wax layers really well, so you get rid of all the rust. Now, if you have some pitting in the top, of uh, your table saw you're gonna have to do a little bit more work to get in that pitting out of there but um the point of this is to get rid of the rust and uh, make your table saw real nice and smooth so the work smooths right over it oh there we go now remember how i said waterproof take a little bit of water here Check this out, guys. Now I'm filming from my iPhone here, so see how the beads right on the top there. That way, if you uh, get a little water in there, you can wipe it off right off the bat. Keep any of that rust from even starting, right? Okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. This is the very first one I've ever put on YouTube, so try to be nice. And uh, if you enjoyed uh, what you saw here, I'm going to be making a couple more videos about, uh, like I said in the beginning, some extension tables and even uh, a, a router table extension. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys have a great day. I'll see you later.